Does the Bible include every single teaching from Jesus? Is there something hidden? Jesus Christ has been a figure of a still ongoing debate such as whether he really existed or not, whether he really was a son of God and was conceived by a virgin, or he was just a human being that, through his teachings, wanted to increase the awareness about our inner consciousness. As the New Testament, in which carefully were included only the Gospels of four disciples, states, Jesus was the living Son of God who came on earth to redeem us from the original sin. But what if there is a different story? What if Jesus is not above us all, but a spiritual leader that wanted to move us all towards inner growth and awareness of our true nature? We will try to find out together in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. The New Testament of the Bible portrays Jesus not as an ordinary man, but as the one that has come to save us. He is thus regarded as Christ, a word which derives from Greek Christos, which means the anointed one, the long-awaited Messiah. Jesus from the Bible does miracles such as healing mortally ill people or raising them from the death. Later on, after he is crucified and then placed in a cave, Jesus is told to resurrect, which is the apogee of his miracles. In the Bible, Jesus is Lord and Son of God in a unique way. He remains forever distinct from the rest of humanity whom he came to save. But what if there is a different story? In the Gnostic texts of Nakh Hammadi, you can check our previous episode for more information about the scriptures, we see a totally different description of Jesus. There, he is portrayed as a guide who opens access to spiritual understanding. He is not the real son of God, but according to the secret gospels, every human being is a son of God. Jesus is rather a spiritual teacher who raises the awareness of the people. He doesn't insist on being a leader, he only shows the way. It's a bit like Star Wars and the way of the Jedi. In the Gnostic Gospels, the living Jesus speaks of illusion and enlightenment through self-knowledge. It is believed that when the disciple attains spiritual understanding, Jesus no longer serves as a spiritual master as the two have become equal. As it states in the secret gospel of Philip, whoever achieves gnosis becomes no longer a Christian, but a Christ. From this, we see that the name Christ did not mean the chosen one, the Messiah, but rather the one who gained knowledge and eventually became one with God. Isn't this what we all should strive for? Become one with all there is, consciously. Christ is a state of consciousness. It's the state referred to in the spiritual community today as oneness or unity consciousness. Jesus was a representative of Christ consciousness. Jesus says, I am the light that is above them all. I am the all. The all came forth from me and the all attained to me. Cleave a piece of wood and I am there. Raise up a stone and you will find me there. The Gospel of Thomas relates that as soon as Thomas recognizes Jesus, Jesus says to Thomas that they have both received their being from the same source, which is the divine consciousness. Therefore, we can assume that the main teaching of Jesus as a spiritual leader was the Gnosis, self-knowledge as knowledge of God. There's light within a man of light, and it lights up the whole world. If he doesn't shine, he is darkness. Today Christians believe that Christ was one with God, but Jesus seems to have another opinion. This is one of the so-called secrets. He was saying that the rest of us are God as well, children of the light, connected always and forever with the divine consciousness. He explicitly tells James, free yourself from this blind idea that you are merely the case of flesh which encircles you. Then you will reach him who is, then you will no longer be James, rather 
you are the one who is. Very close to the understanding that we are all there is. Of course, individually speaking, that means one who is, isn't it? The Gospel of Thomas being the most well-known one in the recent years also points that the so long searched Kingdom of Heaven is not a physical realm of God, but rather a state of being, state of consciousness. Jesus said, Rather, the kingdom is inside of you and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, then you will become known and you will realize that it is you who are the sons of the living Father. But if you will not know yourselves, you will dwell in poverty and it is you who are that poverty. This quote also points to those who remain closed and unwilling to discover their real selves and teaches that the lack of self-knowledge ultimately is synonymous with poetry, poetry of the soul and the spirit. They will not find the kingdom inside nor outside but will remain poor and will continue reincarnating until finally they realize the gnosis. It also encouraged the continuous search for the truth. This is the understanding that the so-called way has no end, because the journey to seek is the truth itself, the journey to know ourselves. In the Gospel of Thomas, there are two very important keys of information that were written about 300 years after the time of Jesus. Verse 106, Jesus said, When you make the two one, you will become the sons of man. And when you say mountain, move away, it will move away. One possible meaning is that when you can marry your thoughts and your emotions in your hearts into one single potent force in your bodies, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. Also, if you consciously decide to focus on one single thought of energy, you will always gain the power to make it a reality. Because this is our true power and the well-kept secret throughout the centuries. We are all creators, all living gods who create their own realities. The Gospel of Thomas represents our connection to consciousness and all that is. It is the knowledge that liberates men. People have tried saying this many times and nothing happens. But why? Because the asking is not done with thought and emotion. To ask, we must speak to the field in the language that the field recognizes and a language that's meaningful, that comes from the power of our heart, from the light within us, from unconditional love. The word unconditional means there are no conditions. Love without condition is the most powerful thing we have. Our heart creates feelings of electrical and magnetic waves. That's the language that the field recognizes. So, when you create the feeling in your heart as if your prayer is already answered, that creates an electrical and magnetic waves that bring the answer to you. It is already proven by quantum mechanics. In the Gospel of Truth, Jesus is described to emphasize on this. Let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished and he will rule over all things. This saying in a way warns those people who decide to take the journey of discovering themselves. Gnostics believe that the Gnosis is not appropriate for everybody, since some people are just not ready to receive such a deep understanding of everything and will only lead to negative results. Still, however, those who are ready might also get confused, even temporarily lost as the acquiring of Gnosis changes human's perspective of the world. Because once you step into the way of knowledge, there is no turning back. And with that comes responsibility. Because you understand how important are the choices you make and even the words that come out of your mouth. Because everything moves and vibrates. The question of Jesus' resurrection is also raised in some of the Gnostic Gospels. 
which criticize the orthodox understanding of resurrection as too literal. Some Gnostics even reject the Gospel of Luke and call the literal view of the resurrection as the faith of fools. Rather, Gnostics look for the symbolical meaning of the resurrection, not of the body, but as a spiritual one. In the Gospel of Mary, the resurrected Jesus is described to appear in visions and dreams, but not physically. Contrary to orthodox sources which interpret Christ's death as a sacrifice redeeming humanity from guilt and sin, this Gnostic Gospel sees the crucifixion as the occasion for discovering the divine self within. The Gnostic Gospels are very rich in terms of themes and topics. Some of the other main teachings are self-ignorance equals self-destruction, non-attachment to the material world and non-conformity to the world, meaning that people should be both present in the world, but at the same time should not limit themselves only to the world. Rather, they should understand about what stays above the material world and beyond it. Very similar to the second hermetic principle, as above, so below, as below, so above. Another important topic is the equality of men and women. In the Gnostic Gospels, women are viewed as equal to men in any way. The Gnostic belief was even followed by a second century Orthodox priest, Clement of Alexandria, who takes the Gnostic thesis and points that men and women share equally in perfection, for the name humanity is common to both men and women, and for us in Christ there is neither male nor female. For Judaism and then Christianity, the main purpose of life is to live according to God's rules, thus redeeming the original sin. People are supposed to go to churches and seek salvation in an outside institution or person and are led to believe that their fate is part of God's plan, therefore transferring the whole responsibility for their lives to God. The salvation as an ultimate goal in Christianity means to go to heaven after death and it entirely depends on the deeds a person did throughout his or her life. But what if that's not all? Gnosticism, again, offers a different view of the purpose of life, which is to become aware of the self and thus gain gnosis. For the Gnostics, the kingdom of heaven is equal to the state of transformed consciousness. The more we learn and thus change from hulic to pneumotic type of people, the faster we will reach the final destination, which is to go back to the divine consciousness out of the material world that is full of suffering. In this philosophy of life, Gnosticism resembles Buddhism as both view the spiritual growth as a necessary part for getting closer to the ultimate goal or as it is in Buddhism, the Nirvana. For the Gnostics, our life journey is one of many lifetimes in which our consciousness, spirit, reincarnates every time our physical body dies, and with every reincarnation, if we follow the path of Gnosis, we can become wiser and go further along the way of realization. Or stay in the same spot if we remain unaware of our inner selves. This idea of reincarnation is also close to Buddhism and Hinduism, in which the spirit reincarnates into different life forms within different conditions depending on everybody's personal karma. The difference between the Orthodox Christianity and Gnosticism on the matter of salvation and purpose of life is fundamentally different as the first tells us to look for salvation outside, in Jesus for example, while Gnosticism teaches to seek the salvation inside and to not rely on the figure of Jesus itself, but follow his way of living. Jesus said to them, when you make the two into one, and when you make the inner like the outer, and the outer like the inner, the upper like the lower, and when you make male and female into a single one, so that the male will not be male, nor the female be male, then you will enter the kingdom.
When you so identify with the light within, when you make the lower self like the God above, the mighty I am presence, when you purify your chakras, the upper chakras magnifying the alpha or masculine and the lower chakras the omega or feminine energies. The core of Jesus' message was trying to teach people how to become a whole being by merging their masculine and feminine hemispheres into one and by doing so to become spiritually sovereign. Because metaphysically what's actually taking place in the state of the world is that the masculine and feminine energies are in opposition. This conflict is manifested externally as the dissonance around us. We're seeing the masculine and feminine energies are not in harmony, instead they're imbalanced and clashing where one energy is dominating the other and one is being suppressed by the other. So it's all about healing the trauma of the masculine and feminine energy or the two polarities that are in every one of us. We don't need separation but unity. To find inner harmony and outer balance we must synchronize these two worlds and follow the way of the force or become aware that we are all there is experiencing itself as a human being. This is the true understanding and Jesus is one of the many great spiritual teachers and leaders. We bow before you and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open and until we meet again.